Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Got a lot of DMs after last night's episode. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. Sure was. <clears throat> Delco, sure was. Delco, you didn't watch uh, the show yesterday, right? Not yet. Okay. Okay. We'll have a chat on the, on the Ottoman about it later and, uh, and kind of fill you in on what happened. Got a lot of that will play messages uh, this morning, and I regret nothing. Okay, the monitor's super far away. No, it's not. It's the same distance no, away sure as isn't. that monitor is from me. It sure is. And was backed up. Uh, her head was about the size of a dime. Yeah, and okay. I, could, I could still tell that there was some weird contouring going on in the face. Yeah, and we've got uh, Medal of Honor recipients, uh, Florent Groberg, with us today. Friend of the show. You've been on before. I'm going to tell you what happened real quick because I'm sure it's happened to you. It's happened to all of uh, it's us. It's not happened to We saw people. a transsexual female. Okay. okay. Just a little headshot about the size of, again, size of a dime. Who was on the dime? Was it Franklin? Yeah. I Probably, think, yeah, Dave Franklin. What do you, what? I, I'm sorry, I was taking notes. I didn't hear. You said she was a dime? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. uh, said about the size of a dime. Whose head is on the dime? Is it Franklin? Uh, it's FDR. Is it really? I think so. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking. You want head from a dime? Sure don't. It's uh, FDR. Sure don't. It's said, FDR. Yeah. Wow, did a whole movie about him. Didn't know that. Uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Right. Wheelchair. Yeah. On the dime. Yeah. That's how, that's how big it was. About this size, real far away. You see how far these monitors are. Flow. So hold on, what happened? I saw a face of what I thought was a lady, and I said, that'll play. Turns out it was a man who has now become a lady, and I have not heard the end of it today. Oh, you're not uh, going to. It's an honest <laughs> mistake. There we go. It's happened to you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> well, here's, here's how every dude answers that question. It's like, oh, I understand how that might happen, but it's never happened to me. Yeah. It's the same way dudes respond to like erectile dysfunction. Like, oh, yeah, that could happen because you want to leave some space for empathy for you downstream, sure. but not admit to anything right now. Because you never know. Yeah, it's an important move. I you think. never it, know. It happened to my best friend. Oh, did it really? Oh, 100%, but a lot worse. Oh, he, he actually inserted and completed? No, no, thank goodness. But picture this, uh -huh. Vegas. I'm picturing it right yeah, now. Yeah, same here. I haven't stopped picturing it since he was talking about it on Friday it, last week. Exactly. So Vegas, where, where is he at? Bellagio, Venetian? What's the Met, Met Metropolitan? What, yeah. What, yeah, Cosmopolitan. Yeah, Cosmopolitan there we right go. there. So we're at that club, and he's 6'5". I'm hanging out with <laughs> three other dudes, like you know, 6'4", 6'5". Yeah. And we ordered a bottle. We were with a guy who pretends to be a count, right? But it's dark, and next thing you know, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, account like yeah, uh, account, Dracula? like like account, like in you know in the UK in England, he he came out. This guy bought everything that night. He tells us like I'm a count. We're like sure, sounds that's good. fun. He, he bought all the drinks specifically after what happened to my buddy Tim Tom, who's going to kill me. Okay, wow. uh, thanks for saying his name out. Oh, loud, absolutely. By Shout out Tim absolutely. Tom. We are not editing that because this no, 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 is no, it's live. Nothing this you can is, do. He's got two first names, Tim Tom. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's a nickname. So, okay, cool. So he cool. still might be in the clear where he's not. All right. So out of nowhere, we're about to take a shot. This chick just walks up to him, grabs yeah. him by the back of the head, yeah. and starts making out with him. Ah. But it's really dark. Yeah. So you're kind of like, man, he's, he's, he's starting it off good tonight. Sure. Flash of light. <laughs> and we looked at her, yep. and immediately we just all backed away. Like, Five o'clock shadow? What was, uh, it? What was the giveaway? No, it was just Adam's like, apple? It, was, it looked like a man. Like, mm, it looked like. Shoulders. So, yeah. so she, she like starts making out with him, and then she, he pulls off a little bit. And she says something to him, I couldn't hear, and then she walks away. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, dude, that, that was, that, that's terrible. And he's like, ah, man, it, it, whatever, it was aggressive. Yeah. So we don't know that was actually a dude. An hour later, I go take a piss. I got my buddy, he's going, he's like, hey, let's go take a piss, take a piss. I swear to God, he can't make this up. I take the one stall. He's, you know, courtesy, right? Sure. You skip the middle stall. Buffer. You go to your stall. Yeah. Right? A little uh, buffer. Yeah. She walked in there. Pull her skirt up with the heels and everything. Did she, you see the hog? Did you see the hog? Was it Brother, nice? I, I, not only did I see it, I bent over this close to look at it. I needed to confirm it, and I, and I died. Was it a nice hog? Yeah. What are we talking here? I'm talking about, like, you know, prime time. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, like, good like it's good it's uh, White, black, it, what's the ethnicity? White. No white. shit. White. A white hog that big. But the problem was I died laughing at that moment. Yeah. Couldn't stop laughing. Little... It's a funny situation. And it I, is. I understand how, from uh, their perspective, it might seem cruel to laugh at something like that. But it's because it's 
so awkward. You ha- what else are you going to do? Well, I mean, yeah. I was just laughing because I was really drunk, and I just figured, holy shit, I have something on Tim Tom for it. Well, he laughs every time he sees any kind of penis. Yeah, so I was going to say, like, I'll look over, even in the men's room, at other dudes just to see what they're working with. You know, I want to see that hog work. You're that guy. S- uh, yeah, I want to see. I'm like, he's oh, a shit. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'll look over. And I'll I don't like, even like. Congratulations. I don't even like looking at another dude's car. <laughs> I think it's disrespectful. Stop looking at my shit. Yeah, I'll go over and t- I'll take a hog peek. You know, just a nice hog peek. I'm nice. like, all right, shit. I'll nice. give him. I'll give him like a hey. What's congratulations on that? Hey, but all, all all the power to her, man. She took her shot and she got it. Look, well, shoot, t- shoot. That's kind of sexual assault, but yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Either yeah. way, yeah. it's fine. It's low grade. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mouth. To, it's rat hole. What if rat hole what if uh, Lee Harvey Oswald like didn't show up to Dallas that day? You know. Yeah. You got to take your shot. This well, is a handshake. Yeah. That's fucked up. But yeah, isn't it? Yeah, making <laughs> out. You mean yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're. Also, so Ross just saw a photo, made an honest mistake, and you're giving him flack for it? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. He's the only one out of the entire group that I made this I alleged mistake. Okay? Listen, I'm sure me or Giorgio have both, like, accidentally, as we're quick swiping on Bumble, just kind of, like, went boop. And then oh. you, you, you kind of, like, realize your mistake after you read the bio. Yeah, that's what happened to me. So, uh, I, what was it, TS, I think? Is what it said in the top. Oh, yeah. Pretend like you don't know it now. So it's called cocaine? What's, what is cocaine? <laughs> Fucking lie. How do I? Man, I how do I just kind of own it. it? Just own it. You made an honest I did. mistake. 100%, look, I, I did. Okay. All I'm saying was the circumstances for me. Again, real far away monitor. Back all I had the about this The surgery's getting better and better these days. It really is. In like five years, I don't think we're going to be able to tell the difference. Maybe. Yeah, we were talking about this off air. It's going to be like how California wine became popular, right? A blind taste test mm-hmm. it helped it beat the French because, you know, there was no snobbery to it. Like mm-hmm. it was all blind. Was so all yeah. you're saying that me caring that it's a real vagina is snobbery? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. All right. Big it. Yeah, wow, that's a weird hill not to die even, on. Not even big, not even big. Like that's too far. I think just snobby. Yeah, Georgie yeah. almost fucked Laverne Cox one night. Whenever so I like, eat pussy, I keep my pinky in the air. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You just, have to. You have to. Just to let them know, yeah. you know. Do we get a glory hoe installed here? I, the I blind taste testing? thought we already had one. Oh, you're talking about blind taste testing pussy? Yeah. Oh, ugh. What are you gonna? You want to go straight against trans? I mean, is there a third? Boy. Oh boy! Only, now I'm now you're really making me think. Here. There's only I'm going through all the pronouns, and I'm like, uh, no, 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 there's only a man-made and a natural vagina, right? Yeah, there's no other way to do that. Yeah. I mean, synthetic maybe, but that's like plastic. You're gonna know the difference there, unless oh, AI, no? unless AI, unless we really go full cyborg on these fucking sex what? dolls. I mean, think about how much better fake breasts have gotten. Yeah, yep. sure, that's true. Yeah, but it's still real skin over them, right? Yeah. So here's. You know, a uh, hundred years ago, everybody thought robots were going to be used for like war and uh, 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 and manufacturing and shit. That'll be the apex of us using that technology. No, it's just sex, sex dolls, sex, <laughs> and then putting machine guns on top of dogs. Yeah, well, like right on their heads. We yeah. we turn dogs from dire wolves into little bitches, so I think they deserve it. That's, too- that's their comeuppance. Like we. 50 or 60 years from now, we should expect most major cities to be run by dogs. And by the way, they're selling that, that robot dog with a machine gun on its head, the Russian one right now. The so Boston Dynamics. 400 million, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. 400. yeah. 400K right now. So I think we should, we should crowdfund that. And I, Great, we it? Put it yeah. in the office? Well, we could just have Richard Ryan come up from, uh, from down the street here and put machine guns on it. He's got the Class 7 license. No, they're selling it with the machine gun. Uh, well, you can, you're not going to be able to buy that here. Yeah, you can get it shipped in. You can't buy... Well, I mean, I guess... No, you can't buy machine guns from overseas like that. Can we just buy it and make it do mundane tasks? Yeah, it's only Sweep. like 40 we'll, grand for the dog. We'll, we'll plug the barrel of that thing and turn it into a lighter, and we'll just use it to smoke weed. Yeah, that'd be fun. I'd love that. Hey, weed down. dog, come over here. And we have a bong sponsor coming up at the end of the month, too, freeze so pipe. that'd be great. Freeze, freeze pipe, pipe is it's on board. It's the best goddamn I love thing I've ever used. Is it really? Yes. yes. <laughs> for you to say that, that's yep. high praise, yep. my man. That is high praise. Uh, also, Dr. Fauci just quit here today, Flo. He's all gone. R.I.P. Well, he's uh, not dead. Eh, is he not? Oh, he's just leaving? He said he's not, he's not dead. Okay. So far as I know, yeah. Uh, all right. He's, uh, he's out of there. Uh, a lot of speculation online right now. The story broke this morning uh, that he wanted to get out of there before Republicans take the House because they know there's going to be an oversight committee to actually <laughs> look through his work and then pull the receipts on Wuhan Lab. Uh, what kind of donations he's been making uh, to some of these pharmaceutical companies and shit like that. 
and it makes sense. It's, a, it's the perfect time to get out. Now, Democrats are defending him by saying, no, he's 81 years old. It was like, motherfucker didn't leave when he was 80. Yeah, he was 80 last year. So what, what's the, the, the hitch now? Um, I <laughs> think with everything being investigated or uh, some, some sort of oversight committee and all this shit, I, yeah, he'd be 100% he's going to be in that fucking Senate answering questions. Yeah, I mean, does it matter if he's you know, in office or not? He's still going to have to answer questions if that's true. Yeah. Well, maybe the FBI will go raid his place in Mar-a-Lago. <sighs> maybe. We'll find out. Because uh, he's got one, right? I, I think so. He's, I an think old, he, he's an old Italian man. He definitely has a place in Florida somewhere. Probably Naples. Yeah, Naples. that's my guess. Did you just say Naples at the same time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, but it's, uh, it's, it's a strange thing for him uh, to leave now. Like, fuck, if I were him, I would have gotten out of there when, when Biden got in or something and be like, well, you're on your own. See you later, fuck faces. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what goes through these, you know, these specific individuals' minds and wanting to serve. I mean, he gets shit on nonstop on both sides. You know, he tells you something no one likes on this one side. He ch changes his mind. They don't like it on this side. So he has no winning course here. But, I mean. Well, telling the truth might be a good start. Yeah. Right. Like not so for example, without any evidence to suggest this, telling everybody in the entire world that AIDS can be spread through normal household contact, right? Ruined thousands of people's lives, tens of thousands. Like fuck this guy. Yeah. I, I sincerely hope that he dies afraid and alone sooner rather than later. You know what's weird though is a guy like this won't. He'll he's rich. He's like white. He's going to be fine. Like he'll go. This motherfucker will go till 95. We'll see. You don't think so? Who knows, man? Life is unpredictable. <laughs> right. That's not a veiled threat. I know. I'm starting to. Did he quit today? Is that a fair? Yeah. yeah, he quit today. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like, seriously, hopefully he dies afraid and alone. Just like all the people that I just mentioned whose families and friends turned their backs on them because they thought they could get AIDS from getting sneezed on and uh -huh. shit. Like tens of thousands of people in America that happened to. And then the tens of thousands of people who died alone. And fucking emergency rooms because of his bullshit policies that were unscientific and politically motivated that kept their families from going in there and saying goodbye. Like, fuck this guy. I, can't, no. I hope he dies the most painful way possible. Well, we'll find out. Because that's what he fucking deserves. Yeah, we'll you're out. welcome, Flo. Yeah, we're going to find out. You'll we'll find out. And life is a highway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, really. How many lanes? It was this, there was a song about it. It's a 20 lane highway, but it's like every quarter mile, it fucking shrinks down to two lanes. Yeah. yeah. That's what life is. It's bullshit. Tom Shit. Cochran sang that song, by the way. That's Tom, what it Tommy was Cox. to get here. Tommy Cox. Uh, since you're here today, uh, obviously, you know, Medal of Honor, all that shit. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the current state of today's military. Mm. There was a story over the weekend uh, with Don Jr. where he was given a speech and he said, uh, that he's got a lot of friends who are Navy SEALs, and they're spending more time in diversity training than they are actually shooting anymore. Um, have you heard that from people like uh, on the inside or who were potentially thinking about entering the military where they're like, fuck, man, there's all this diversity training for all this fucking bullshit now, and I, don't want, I just don't want to do it? Well, first of all, I don't know about the SEALs. Um, I work with, um, with different units in my current job. Um, they're so active. They're still they're shooting a lot. They're deploying, not deploying as much as they used to, even two years ago. Mm. But they're still deploying. So, you know, I don't know what kind of diversity courses they're taking. I'm sure they're taking some. But they don't give shit. I do. I do know that a couple of years ago, I think almost six, five, six years ago, uh, I was hearing that individuals in basic training in the army were allowed to bring their cell phones and have it in their wall locker, and they'd have a period of time during a week or whatever. To like you know have your cell phone time mental health mental health day is it mental mental health day or some shit yeah like that. yeah, yeah. Is it's it really? the same stuff that goes on in corporate America like you get to say hey you know what I don't really feel like coming to work today yeah but instead of saying that you say oh it's mental health day and because they've you know institutions take things like this and weaponize them you know what I mean always they, the the what is it the road to hell is paved with the best intentions or some shit like that yeah like, that's how it always goes but I feel like that's so that to me that was that was strange to go do that because there's a if there's one time in the military that you really need to disconnect it's probably during basic training right that's, that's when, the whole fucking point yeah they break you down and they reset your foundation so you can just go out there and be operational the way they want you to be operational so I didn't tell anyone when I went to basic training I got no letters you know I didn't make phone calls I just fucking woke up in the morning. Fired up to go through that day because I knew I need I needed to be su <clears throat> successful that day mm -hmm. so I could graduate nine weeks later and then go on to do different things. I wanted to deploy. I wanted to be out there and fight. So I didn't go there thinking about like I want to call my girlfriend. I want to call my wife. I want to mm -hmm. you know I want to 
check out the bear score. Yeah. Probably a good thing. You know, but yeah, the Bears are terrible. Yeah, they're oh bad. Oh my god, yeah, they're getting be even worse this year. Too. Even worse. Yeah, this is going to be a rough year yeah, for the Bears. Sure is. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm three wins for them. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. I think it's probably that's six, generous. But... <laughs> is it? Is it generous? They have no O line. They have no O line. I think whatsoever. I think they'll still win six. They get good. They have a good defense. Yeah, but... and and it's a good schedule. Yeah, that fucking conference or that uh, that conference is bullshit. Is, is bullshit but I mean, uh... it's like the only team in that conference is the Packers. So yeah, I don't yeah. even know. I don't even know if it's the Packers anymore. Yeah, maybe they'll, they'll be maybe. pretty good. Maybe yes, yeah, so you can use phones and shit. Yeah, so that's, I mean, you know, that's what I heard. So I it's, thought it was a little bit different. So obviously things are changing, right? Yeah, but it's uh, hard to say why they're changing. So uh, I don't know if all the branches are doing this, but the Marine Corps is giving kids vitamin D shots when they get in, when they first come in, because their bone density is so low. And the long-term studies that we have now, we know that a 21-year-old in 2022 has 40% less testosterone as their counterpart in, two, in the year 2000, Yeah, right? Like, that's fucked. That is in every possible way. So we like to blame everything on wokeness all the time, but it might just be that wokeness is society holding up a mirror to itself. And because these people have no bone density and no testosterone anymore, they're just all bitches. So society has become a bitch. It's very possible that that's the case. Well, you're also being celebrated for all these like mental health breaks. Oh yeah, with actors and, and well, athletes. Well, that's the next logical musicians. step after participation trophy. Yeah, like once you get an award for just existing, then you have to be rewarded for failing as well. That's the fucking natural progression there. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it needs to be noted though. By the way, every time you talk about participation trophies, you know who invented those, right? Who? Fucking boomers. Boomers. What do you mean? Baby boomers. Uh, yeah, it was Millennials the, didn't invent that shit. No, it oh. was the... Uh, it was our parents. What was that called back in the day? It wasn't even... Well, partly our parents but and our, and our parents' parents as well, but it's uh, the uh, self-something movement. Fuck, self-importance movement, maybe? They used to call it something in the 70s. And it was like, we've been too hard on our kids. It was after Vietnam, and all the kids yeah. were all uh, disillusioned. Okay, gotcha. stuff. We've been too hard on our kids. We have to start blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But well, I think I think we go through these these periods. Yeah. Right. I, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't how, know if Sparta ever went through any of this. Although they were raping children the whole time. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way out of this one. It was funny. I was listening to Tim Dillon on on Rogan the other day, and he was talking about uh, that this is this is pretty much the end. Like we're the last group before you know the hundred year. He said there's probably about a hundred years in there, and then it's all gonna tear itself. Well, I got bad apart. news. Well, a hundred years is great. Yeah. Well, well for us, yeah. same. Yeah. Um, I got bad news for Tim Dillon if it, if it's lower than that he's not gonna make it oh like he he'll knows. be one of the first people to die oh he knows I, I, maybe he's like a court jester or something he knows he's hoping to be rich enough to be above it and start paying people off when the when the financial markets collapse <laughs> nobody gives a fuck about your piece of paper anymore bud <laughs> we'll see unless you're sitting on some gold bullion i've got no i'm I've just gonna go take his gold. shit <laughs> if some dude says hey i can't protect myself i need you i'm gonna pay you to protect me i'm like Looking around at the Thunderdome, I'm like, that's all mine now, bud. Yeah, but there is – it's a jail system, dude. You know, you can get protection in jail too. So think, You know, the other, the other part that we I think about is, is the military just smarter than all of us? And they, they're just – for the first time ever, they're two steps ahead. And they realize what type of war, you know, they're going to get themselves into in the what, next big one. What, a giant dick-sucking competition? Well, you know – Someone, like it, instead you'd of be pretty good. instead yeah. of yeah you would be I'd really be good at it, at it. Yeah. especially if it <laughs> was a TS. Look uh, at these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey guys, the internet and the stream seems to be cutting out right now. You want to keep going with the episode and re-upload or try yeah, to we'll, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and do that. Oh, uh, yeah, just keep, keep it rolling. What's the what's the sitch there? I don't know. You can uh, froze for a second. Yeah, it's bouncing on air. There. Apparently, a few storms rolling through the the area. Oh, in the, in the old Texas area here. Yeah, yeah it was the, the clouds were getting pretty dark when I was driving in. Yeah, we'll keep going. Just go ahead and yeah, we'll keep going. That's fine. That. Um, yeah, we'll keep going and uh, upload it tonight. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but with that, like you know, as far as like all these fucking actors and celebrities and all this other shit uh, and, and musicians, um, what I'm finding the common theme is, and we'll, we'll, I'll ask you about this military wise, is I don't think people want to do the jobs that they actually signed up to do. You know what it is going in. Uh, so the latest one was Jonah Hill, right? Uh, he's an actor. Yeah. Did not want to do press anymore for his movies. Interesting. That is what being a movie star is. He's Marshall Lynch. If, 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 yeah. yeah, if you want to uh, put that a little closer to your mouth. Um, yeah. if, if you want to 
do that job or that profession, it's pretty fucking simple that, all right, great, I've got to star in the film and then promote the film. Those are my two jobs. That right. is it. Uh, same with Osaka and the, the tennis player, you know, the, the Japanese tennis yeah. player. Hey, you got to do interviews before and after. I don't want to do that. Everybody's mean. I don't like the questions. I just want to. It's like, well, that's not part of the job. You can go and teach somewhere yeah. and do the same thing. There was uh, in the music. Fa- in fairness to Osaka, yeah. she'll do interviews where they're nice to her. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fan fucking tastic for her. Uh, Sean Mendez just canceled a worldwide tour. Yeah, uh, I saw that. He's one of the biggest pop stars. Same thing. He was just like, I need, I need to take a mental health break. Oh, my God, you're so brave. You're so amazing. Now, with the military, is it the same way where people are just showing up and they're like, is it, it's just too hard. I don't want to do it. Or is there something else to it? Well, think about the uh, recruitment rates in the early 1980s. They were not very good. Right. Nobody. It's where the um, uh, be all you can be uh, commercial campaign came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Marine Corps started spending money for the first time to recruit people. It's where all those old dope Marine Corps commercials, recruiting commercials came from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, if the Marine Corps can't hit their recruitment goals, we're all fucked because they never miss. They're the ones that never miss. Um, because their value proposition is it appeals to a very specific kind of person, right? Like, hey, we're just going to go kill everything. And people are like, oh, it's better than working at McDonald's. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's after Vietnam, I think what what I'm getting at here is that there's no very clear purpose for the type of people, generally speaking, the type of people who who are very aggressive and athletic, who are willing to commit themselves to something that is a, that is a sacrifice, right? Mm. They have a typical ethos or a, a very uh, specific kind of ethos, and that's that. Like, I want everything I'm doing to mean something, to be for something. And when you have the shit that went on in Ga- Afghanistan last year, the entire global war on terror, really, people are looking at it now like, "Fuck this!" Like, I'm not. And I think <clears throat> it might speak some to the centrist crowd who are just trying to do it for the benefits or whatever the fuck. But people like us who wanted to go fight, like I, I, I see all the stuff that's happened and I see what's going on in Ukraine right now where we're in the middle of a fucking, in, in the middle of crazy inflation, probably a recession. Uh, well, sorry, by definition, a recession. Yeah. yeah. And they're sending $70 billion to another country to fight some fucking war that I don't care about. They like, just, fuck off, They dude. just spent another 745, yeah. 745 million two days ago. So more shit. So think about it from the perspective of people who decide to go enlist in a time of war, like these kind of people. Yep. I'm not very motivated to go do it right now, mm-hmm. to be honest. Like if somebody invaded us or there was something that we need to go fight for, I would go do that in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But as far as just enlisting, just signing four or five years of my life over to the whims of these assholes, not one fucking prayer. That's the key. You just said it. That's the key. And that's the problem that we're going to be facing over the course of the next, you know, decade, more than likely in the recruiting numbers and the type of quality of individuals that we get that go into the military is I same. I'm same with you, man. They killed my uncle, a terrorist organization called the GIA in 1996, mm-hmm. became a naturalized citizen in 2001. And then seven months later, the same type of assholes, you know, attacked my adopted country. So to me, there was no other choice but to go serve in the military. Right. Right. That's what you do as an American. Your country is being attacked. You respond. But that's, that's what you do as, in, as an able-bodied man in any society, right? That's the fucking to. standard. That's the standard, yeah. right? That's changed, right? But I do believe, and this is the only, I'm an optimist. Y'all know this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm too much of an optimist. But sure. I do believe that if we do get attacked again, right, and we have a lot of people that really hate us and want to do this every day, that this is one of the few countries in the world that can just, on a dime, just flip, flip a switch, and maybe it's us going back into it as old men, right, leading the way. But I do believe that there's, there's just this thing about being an American that even though we're all fucked up for a little while, we just kind of forget about that fucked up part and we go do our part. You know? Well, you, you look at these recruitment numbers like uh, Dan was saying, um, and you wonder, is it because nothing is going on currently that we give a shit about here, right? Because I, I don't think most Americans really give a shit about Ukraine and Russia, Um I mean, it's certainly not getting any media coverage anymore. Yeah, like, it's because it's been six months. Six months, yeah. and they're all kind of they're kind of yeah. done with it now. Uh, and Zelensky's trying these latch d- ditch efforts about nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. It's, uh, so that would affect everyone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the last word you can pretty much use in a situation like this. And we still don't care. Uh, the way we pulled out of Afghanistan was awful. Yeah. And so, if you're a kid sitting at home who's 18 years old, what is it that you're willing to? 
go and uh, risk to fight for your country anymore when there's not a lot going on. I mean, the majority of these kids that, you know, a lot of part of the deployments to Afghanistan, they went in not because of 9-11 like we did, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't understand that. They were too fucking young. They went in because mom or dad went in, right? That was was a reason. It's kind of like, oh, I'm going to follow their footsteps. They, They had no idea what they were really fighting for. You probably ask these guys like, hey, so what happened on September 11th? How many people died? Like, how did you feel? Well, I wasn't born, you know, or I was three, right? Or right. I was four. Why'd you go in? I don't know. My parent, my dad went in and my mom went in or whatever, and I just felt that was the right thing to do. They didn't go in with the same type of, like, emotions that a lot of us did. Like, we, we were hurt. Like, you, you fucking did what? Yeah. Like, I'm going. I'm going to forget my path. Whatever I was studying or whatever I was doing, I'm going to go fight. I'm going to wear the uniform. I'm going to fight with the finest men and women that I know of. You know why they're the finest? Because they're doing the same thing I'm doing. Probably stupid. And we're going to go across, you know, across the water and go fuck you up. That was the mindset. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, dude, you're, you're right because you're, you're looking at it. That was a 20-year war. And some of these kids now are shit. 9-11 was at, in a month will be 21 years. You know, like a 21-year-old. You can drink now since yeah. since nine eleven <laughs> happened, which is wild to me. Yeah, I would say most of the uh, when the eighty second and the Marines were deployed over there to to exfil people. I would say the vast majority of people E four and below were not born when the towers went down. Like the vast majority, no probably shit, ninety percent. Yeah, okay, because they would have been somewhere between eighteen and nineteen years old. Yeah, I didn't even think about the the parent aspect. You're right. You know, yeah, you parents just... were there. They had kids. They came back, and it's great. Great. What does dad do for a living? Well. And it, they're growing up in an environment, right? Mm-hmm. So at least they get that concept, right? But Well, it's an environment where most of your life is defined by the sacrifices you make, yeah. which is what life is supposed to be, by the way. And I'm, not everybody needs to serve in the goddamn military, to, to and, and you don't need to to be able to accomplish that either. I don't want them to. Yeah. Yeah, I really so don't not. want them to. But, I mean, just and the ordinary person who has no, <clears throat> I guess, aggressive or violent inclination can still find a way to sacrifice for other people every single day of their life. Like, Correct. That's not very difficult 100%. to figure that shit out. Yeah. Uh, where are you working at now? You mentioned... Uh, Microsoft. Oh, you're at Microsoft now? Yep. No shit. How's yep. that going? I love it. It's been good, man. You right. hang out with Bill Gates? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even... Does he even work for the company anymore? No, he doesn't. I, I, I don't know what his association is with the company anymore, but I know... I think he he's, started it. He's, <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, that's a fact. <laughs> he's probably on the... I, I know that history of Michael. <laughs> he's probably on the board... I don't think he's on the board. I think actually, if he's, he's on the board, then he's just a shareholder at this point. I would yeah, yeah, I, I, probably. He definitely has some shares. Yeah. I think he's doing his own thing, and uh, the company went one direction. Yeah, you know, he was. He did a hell of a job of creating Microsoft with you know, with, with the team out there. But so they're getting involved with One Direction now. Sure, I mean, it makes what? sense. Microsoft One Direction. Yep, they're trying to bring Harry Styles back. Yeah, time out for what? The no, I thought that's what you said. Yeah, the music group. Oh, you are in a boy that. band. Wow, I'm starting music. Very one popular band, band. band, yeah. For One Direction. No, I just made all this up. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> like, Bill cool. Gates. I got really hot. It would have made show. sense if we had uh, our, um, our streaming you know, platform yeah. again. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Bill Gates, though, loves young boy bands. And, uh, you know, he's just trying to Me put too, a though. band back together. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> I did enjoy One Direction. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were, look, Too Harry bad. Styles is still fucking banging on him. Yeah, but he's like. Time out. You tell me you didn't sing, it was an NSYNC uh, or Black I just, Black I went to a Backstreet Boys back concert. And like KOTB, yeah, he was yeah. there. No, not, not New Kids on the Block. Oh, you went to Backstreet? Yeah. Who, who were they with? Weren't they with another, I think it was a Bang Banger, right? Was it an KOTB? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't remember watching an opening band, to be really? honest. Really? All right, like, they, they were don't headlining really, don't, on their you, own. You don't need an opener when you play three hours of. 30 years worth of music. You know what I mean? They like, used to tour together. The two yeah, but, na- but now it's like they, out cash. They'll, they'll drop in three or four songs that are new. Okay. Uh, and, you know, come on, man. Sure. Like, nobody cares about that shit. No. But they play a legit two and a half hours of old music. Really? So you don't really, I mean, what, what would, it would be weird if there was like a 45 minute to an hour long opener and then three hours of fucking Backstreet Boys. People, so you, the only reason people came there is to see the Backstreet Boys. You guys do a lot of concerts? Yes. I just went to one on Saturday night. <laughs> really? I don't know how you do it. I saw the Lumineers on Saturday nights. and Oh, they're uh, one of those bands that like clap on their leg and then say, hey. Right. Hey. 100%. That used to be music. It's not anymore. Well, you turn that shit off. Hang on. Here's the, cra- <laughs> here's the crazy part of this. So I had the same thought going in where I was like, all right, how does like a folksy alt band sell out a whole fucking arena like this? Yeah. What are they going to do that is different than everybody else these days? And it was the wildest setup I've ever seen. 
they had probably 20 or 30 people that were sprinting back and forth on stage as soon as they finished the song and picked up all the equipment like it was Wimbledon, like it was a ball yeah. boy at Wimbledon. Cleared it. They were another part of the stage. They were uh, in like eight different parts of the stage at all times. So you were always looking around. They would go into the next song, boom, to the next song, boom, to the next song. I've never seen a setup like that, and it's clearly intentional where you're just like, oh, shit. You know what kind of music you play, and then it's a little slower. This picks up the pace yeah. to where you're like, why didn't every band just do this forever? Um, it was wild to see, and uh, I understand why they're becoming one of the biggest bands in the world, but mm. uh, it, it's super interesting to see. And then the other one was, uh, you and I were chatting about this the other day, was uh, Mumford & Sons, and you're oh, like, hey, man. dude, th- Homeboy's going to come back, and he's just Mumford now. Yep. And you, and you were like, what's the difference? It sounds totally fucking different. I oh, hate really? to really? admit it. Yeah. Bad? Strange. I mean, that's good news because it sounded every fucking thing he's ever done before sounded literally exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure if that was his choice or uh, just he didn't have the band anymore. But, I mean, certainly uh, his voice doesn't sound any different. It hmm. doesn't, but it's a, it's a totally different vibe of music where you're like, oh. I mean, it took me a second. I had to look at the, the name. On Sirius XM, and I was like, oh, Marcus Mumford, okay. Yeah, I was like, that makes sense. It's wild. You don't go to concerts? Not anymore. I mean, I do. Ugh. Who's your Who's your jam? Gun to head, you, you got one band to listen Poison to. Poison was in San Antonio uh, last night. Shut up! It's Poison and Motley Crue, actually. Dude, that would yeah. have been a fucking I show. I think Jared and Corey went. Did they really? Yeah. That would have been fun, dude. So, Gun to Head. Tupac? Tupac was my favorite growing up. Did you ever see him live? Nope. Died too early. Yeah. Um... I think then I went to a little bit of rock. I did the whole like Blink One Eight Two, Green Day, Red Hot Chili Peppers, all that stuff. You know, I went to uh, all those concerts growing up, which was fun. Uh, probably the best concert I've ever been to, Coldplay. Oh, <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah, no, dude. It's just you're gonna get killed for I, saying that, but I'm gonna give a fuck. I'm with you. So same. Well, thing I mean, with- it's like you too. Right, like Same, but the, the people involved are pieces of shit, but the music's pretty good. You can't. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, it's a fucking light show. That's what it is. It's, it is. It's, it's just you're you're like, and and if, if I just told my wife this on Saturday after the Lumineers thing, I was like, Coldplay actively. If you watch their documentary, they were trying to become the biggest band in the world. Yeah. To do that, you have to do the lights and the running around and the huge stages and all that shit and figure it out, especially for that type mm-hmm. of music. Because that's it's not like the fucking Foo Fighters or Metallica or somebody who's just going to blow the roof off the place. You've got to figure out a way to get a whole audience involved like yeah, that. Yeah. And I'm with you. I've been to probably two or three Coldplay shows, and they destroy live where you can't help but get caught up. Yeah, you're it. like, damn, this is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, I want to see Kygo, though. That's who I want to go. I wanna who? Kygo. I don't know who Kygo is. He's who's, a- who's Kygo? It's a great show. Uh, he was early in the wave of like dance music in like 2016 to 2019. Key, uh, keyboard player, you, you'd know a lot of the songs. Okay. When you see him. Uh, what about? Does he have a guitar at all? Because no, I'm a big fan of the guitar. Huge fan of guitars. Yeah, uh, there is an artist named Okay who plays guitar. Who? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What? Just okay. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just heard about okay. <laughs> I was like, who's that? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm okay, not. We're not doing this. Yeah, we are. Who's on first? We bullshit? sure Move are, on. dude. We sure are. It's with two O's. Yeah. I, we finally got a, an EDM banger, by the way. Um, really proud of it. Really proud of it. It's, it's, uh, it's called Narco by Blaster Jacks. It's the song that the Mets closer comes out to. I finally got to hear the whole goddamn thing. It is. It's just a straight old school banger. Fuck, dude. fuck Edwin Diaz. That's the song <laughs> that William Contreras walks out to. Yeah, oh, is it really? He has been for two years. Well, no not two shit. years. Since the song came out. Yeah. When, when was it? Late last year? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I finally listened to the whole thing because you were hearing snippets from yeah. the Mets and, and stuff yeah. like that. And I've, I finally heard the whole thing and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to hear this on every college campus. It strikes me as I mean, it's like a big Latino song. So it strikes me as the type of thing if like when Kanye's like uh, power, you know, like no one man should have all that power. It's yeah. like the type of song that, like everyone would walk out to. Right when it came out, sure. You know what I mean. I well, this the same situation. This came out in 2017. I was about to ask. I was about did to it really? Yeah. Really? Oh fuck! Why did it just get big now? I mean, obviously him, but yeah. So far, I, like I, Contreras has been using it for a long time because I remember the first time I heard it, I'm like, this is hilarious. Because <laughs> you don't know what the song is. So All you hear funny, is the dude. fucking trumpet part. Ah, uh, it's like good. Like the walkout. You yeah. Don't, you don't hear any of the actual fucking dance music. Correct. Yeah. So I finally listened to the whole thing uh, yesterday, and I was like, oh shit, dude. We finally got a fucking banger to celebrate, dude. <laughs> College football's coming. Well, you this is what happens. Everywhere. All the uh, all these South 
Western Latinos are moving over to the conservative side now, mm -hmm. right? Because people have been trying to like groom their kids or whatever the fuck. <laughs> and now it's coming through in the music too. Like they're jumping in. There's all kinds of like Latin music being woven into different types of music now, right? Like there's the uh, what the fuck is it called? The rap style that our buddy down there does. Would you, would the one? Oh, that, Jack Manville. Just yeah, he directed video. his. Uh, yeah. Zeus. He directed yeah, yeah, yeah. his fucking thing. There's a name for it. I can't remember what it is. Um. Fuck, there's a name for that type of hip-hop music, but it's getting big now. Like, we're getting close to, a, like, a, a full-on cracker slash Latino amalgamation of culture. Well, you'll it's get coming. there. You'll, you'll get there. You're, yeah. la you're Latinx, uh, which I'm sure you love to be called, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah sure. Thanks. <laughs> I've never heard anybody of Latin descent use that phrase in a non-ironic way. Yeah, what do you think of that? Dude, I'm not even Latin. I'm I'm freaking North African. Mm. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. No shit. Where at? Algeria. My mom is French Algerian. Fuck, dude. But yeah. you've got the skin that you can pass for all of it. Bro, tell that to TSA Pre. Now, do you <laughs> are you totally uh, just divorced from uh, meaning and life? Like, are you just living out the stranger? Are you just wandering a beach, hating everything? Is this a literature joke? Yeah. No one likes Albert Camus. No. Wow. Yeah. Wrong crowd. I no, read wrong the crowd. Dan got a chuckle. Actually, I just downloaded Tough one to the stranger swallow. the other day. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> That's a little too highbrow today, Bob, you know? Yeah, I don't know who you thought you were talking to here. <laughs> Bob woke up and chose literature. He chose literature Asshole. today. When's um, the last, have you been back at any point? I mean, it's kind of dicey over there right now. Where? To Algeria. No, I haven't been to Algeria since 1989. Really? You never went back? No, man. The, um, Did you go back after the earthquake happened? Earthquake? No, I didn't even know one. Uh, San Francisco? Oh. Look, I didn't know if it scared you, okay? If you get frightened easily, uh, the earthquake scared a lot of people out of Dude, the country. Dude, I'm scared of the floods. <laughs> you know, I'm scared of the floods out there, and we just had a flood in Dallas. Yeah, like... Like they got nine today. inches of rain in like in like three hours or some shit like no that. No shit. Yeah. yeah, this whole city just went chaotic. Texas is not set up for that shit either. No, like no. From, from drainage to people understanding how to behave when it rains. At no point do we get it right. No, not at all. And yeah. we haven't seen rain in what three months? And it just shows up. All it's at once. spotty here. Yeah, is we it got spotty we, here? we got some the other day, and then it was like I don't know thirty yeah. minutes, and then it was done. We're a little closer to the coast though. Yeah. So that's, we like, haven't seen anything. What happened in Dallas? Did everything get nuked? Yeah, I mean, it sounded like last it started last night, and the storms came in, and you know, it just started raining and pounding and pounding all day today. And no it, shit. It's a lot of flooding in uh, in the city. It's just kind of disastrous. Wow. Like you said, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're just not prepared for it. There's not like they don't have the same like underground gutter and drainage systems that you see in places on the coast. Like where we grew up in, in the Carolinas and Georgia, every yeah. fucking downtown has that. Oh yeah. Like there's like six to nine foot fucking uh, holes dug out yeah. all around the streets with fucking drainage systems to get that shit out of there. There's nothing like that here. Yeah. If, the, if you get a flood on the East coast, it's from a hurricane. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason that flash flooding is a thing here. Yeah. Cause it's total, they're totally unprepared. So what you're seeing is we could solve this problem really easily. Yes. Okay. Probably. Yeah, I, but we could have solved that whole fucking energy grid problem, too. We, we told, hey, energy, go fuck yourself, brother. Yeah. We don't care, care about the cold. I didn't care. 30% of the pipes in Central Texas burst. Yeah, that was bad. There's a lot of those back roads Fucks. where we live, you and I, where yeah. those would flood out in like two seconds. Oh, yeah, that's why I drive an SUV. Yeah, Same. we want to be in an independent nation, but we haven't figured out weather. No, I don't, no. You can't figure out the weather. You can't figure one. out the weather. It's a hard one, dude. Yeah, it's, too it's too tough. It's too tough. It's too tough. We're not a scientist. We're not scientists up here. The okay. Farmer's Almanac seems to be doing a good job. No. It has always done a great job. I don't really know how. It's, yeah. it, no. All, the, all it does is track the fucking cycles of the moon. It doesn't actually do anything. It makes educated predictions about things in the environment based on that, but that's literally all it does. It's, it's, it's a slightly more scientific horoscope. Is the there, is, is there Farmer's Ben Franklin's like? going to come back and fuck me up now. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Cunt. Probably. It, it predicted COVID. He invented, no one listened. He invented yeah. electricity. Yeah, sure did. Invented it from scratch. Sure goddamn did. Uh, we got some sponsors. Do you mind? He also well, banged yeah, a bunch of old ahead. French ladies. Did he really? He was super into it. When he was like the ambassador to France, all he did was plow fucking French aristocracy. Wouldn't you? Right That's, I mean, that would now, be great Well, uh, he was old, I guess. I mean, if, thinking about it, as a, if, if I was 60, I probably would fuck other 60-year-olds, I guess. I how, how, look up how old Ben Franklin was when he died. Uh, he was 80. Right? Uh, I'll give you the choice Ben Franklin quote sure. on banging old ladies. Okay, great. This I is, like it. This is Ben Franklin. On old pussy, eighty four, okay. and I, and I am not joking. All this right. is an actual founding father quote on vagina. Okay, 
Regarding only what is below the girdle, it is impossible of two women to know an old from a young one. That's a lie. He's saying you ben can't Franklin's tell the difference lie. between wow. old and new puss. We got to yep. test yeah. that out. Yep. Let's put that on. T- Brittany, uh, we're not live anymore. I got to tell Brittany to make that a T-shirt. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucked. It's Ben Franklin's face with like licking his lips. And yep. it just says that whole fucking quote on it. Yeah. That whole B-ring, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. A, he's a liar. I bet they, I, people didn't care about that back then. Did he invent electricity? Well, he discovered what it was. I'm not sure that I'm not sure that he did. He put a, from no, that. I think he was second to it, right? He put a yeah. key. Well, yeah, I mean, put a key on, on a kite, right? right? Yeah. Just, Another reason we need this glory hole. What in the office? Yeah. Connect yeah, the two. That's, yeah. that's he also got struck by. No, no, no. In. Connect the two. Connect the two ideas, motherfucker. He, he wants the, to test out the vaginas there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah we need to young, just, trans to straight. The whole other building is just a vagina test facility. Yeah. It's just all a particle board with holes in it. <laughs> That's a whole business, man. We, wow. we can do it. We've got the extra I don't, You can man. do it for free. I don't, if you sell it, it's a crime. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, you can just show up and yeah. do it. And we're fine with like that. Like if some girl walked in here like, I want to suck every one of your dicks right now. And yeah. if we let her suck all of our dicks, we own this property that's perfectly legal. Yeah. But if she said, I'll do it for a dollar each, now we've committed some fucking crime. Are we you have, kidding yeah. me? Mm. No. Like we, what crime did I commit? We paid Bullshit. for beaches, dude. You crime, paid for beaches. A crime requires a victim. <laughs> and there is no victim there except for maybe my penis like a couple of days later when I have to go get a shot. Well, is it taxed? I'll pay the goddamn okay. tax. Okay. All right. Yeah, this, so in, in, in that instance, really, the victim is, are the, the school children. You're taking away from their education by getting your dick sucked tax free. I don't right. support public schools in the fucking first place, so I'm fine with that. Okay. No, but this is a glory hole for science, so we would be tax exempt. Yeah, and I want not only tax exempt, but I also want a fucking grant from the government to perform this research. Yeah. And you'll get one. I should. Give me thirty thousand dollars to build a glory hole. U.S. government. It's thirty thousand. What are you? Lot. What are you? A gold-plated glory hole? How nah. nice does this fucking thing have to be? Well, You're he's, putting he's these been dicks in this one. He's you been just need some plywood yeah. and a and a yeah. hand saw and a That's little a bit of du- Jones glory and hole. a little bit of duct tape to make sure you don't get fucking uh, uh, splinters. One hundred percent. Yeah. Can we actually just do a, a, a bit for the YouTube channel where we go to Home Depot? And we get like eight Mexicans and bring them back to build what is like clearly a sexual torture chamber. <laughs> yeah. And it just becomes more and more clear. We're just like just telling them what to do, but they don't really know. But it, like the p- picture paints itself as the, they build we, it. We have a whiteboard and it's like crudely drawn <laughs> women getting yep. fucked up on there. Now I need this swing to hold 280 pounds right now yeah. above me. And you're just like, oh, for what? Well, I'm going to hang someone from yeah. it. Here's okay? a good thing about that too, by the way. Uh, Latinx men, yep. uh, who of which he's not clearly. He's no. not a Latinxer. Uh, no. But Latinx men, thank you though. They don't. They yeah. don't. They're not going to get involved in the politics. They're just going to do mm. the fucking work. Goddamn they're right, do they are. A great job. You know I mean? Ask no yep. questions. One hundred percent. Because they're fucking professionals that care more about providing for their family than what the fuck you're doing in your free time. Which, by the way, is how everybody should be. Sure did, dude. You think they when they go home and pick up a twelve pack of Modelo? They give a shit that they just build 14 glory holes for some white guys. First off, they that 12-pack Modelo is on the construction site. I can tell yeah. you from visiting my house, <laughs> that it. it's being built. Nothing wrong with drinking on <laughs> the job, fun, brother. Dude. You know? I'll you tell it. you this. I tip when, when I have movers or construction people or somebody hanging TVs or anything like that. I always tip, right? But I also offer them booze. I feel like that's a, a, the man. I did too, actually, to yeah. Even booze. like in the yep. middle of working. Like if you can't handle one drink and still do what you're doing, then... It probably wasn't going to go well in the first place. No, you know what I mean? No. Uh, we got some sponsors real yep. quick. Flow that pay for this shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Got the cover here right in the center. Look at that, dude. It's on both cameras. Set up very nicely. So if you're out there and you're doing some fucking crazy shit, put a cover down. You don't want to ruin that mattress. 30% off everything in the entire store with the promo code drinking bros at checkout. Fill it all the way to the top. You can put the mattress in there, the sheets, the adjustable base, uh, the cooling uh, comfort, all, all the things you can put in there and, uh, and you get 30% off. They've also got a mattress. If you buy the mattress, you get two free pillows and the pillows are just as good as the goddamn mattress. So go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and check that out. The 40% bundle package is also in the house. It's the adjustable base and the mattress combined together for one night of exciting sex. Shit, you can put the fucking glory hole uh, plywood up on your on your on the bed. Hmm. Just stand that up, you know, or lay it down if you want. I put would it put it, your own face. I would put it on wheels, right, so you can roll it over to the bed and just put your cock through it. Oh, that'd be nice. Or That's... maybe have it like on a curtain rod where you can run it down the middle of the bed and fuck your sure. wife through it, like uh, you know, 
super orthodox Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Except yeah. they use like a bed sheet or something. But what? It, you can well, do all the things in there. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't think it actually says you need to use a bed sheet. No, it's so. your bedroom. Yeah. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. At the bottom of the page, you're going to see a 60 month pay as you go program, no interest, as long as you have decent credits. Uh, and if you check that box, all the deals that I mentioned above can be used with that. And you can walk out of there with a brand new bedroom set for about $25 a month. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Next thing, we got fume, D'Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, do you got the fume on you today? Uh, no, I left it at home. I fucking, yeah, he's got one. George just yeah. got one there and it's boom. Look at that. Oh, that toss Terrible. came in hot, George. Did it hit the Ottoman? You've got a, Flor it, you've got a Florida State Seminole shirt on. You just you threw just like their quarterback. James Winston? Uh, awful. No, no. I mean, right. that's how he threw. I don't want it now. <laughs> Hold that up in the camera. Yeah. There you go. It's a piece Boom. of wood, right? It's a wood, little wood pipe thing. You put uh, uh, these sticks down in it that are soaked in natural flavored oils. Mm -hmm. So it replaces the habit, uh, the hand to mouth habit, but also like a lot of these things that replace the hand to mouth habit don't have the inhale and taste and all that shit. I think they, that's why they fail. Fume has been really good about smoking cessation. Well, a lot of people just want to feel it in their fingers. Mm -hmm. Like, I used to smoke. I smoked for years. Mm -hmm. uh, you just want something in your hand. They didn't really have that uh, when I quit. I quit, shit, 12 No, nah, they ago? tried to give you pills like Shantix and shit yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's what we should do. Let's trust the pharmaceutical industry more to get us out of this problem they caused again. Ch Chantex killed Ray Liotta, I think. Uh, <laughs> that's I th what I heard. I thought it was AIDS. Uh, maybe. No. No, no he's no, he was so on the up and up. He was on the up and up. He partied a lot. Well, that's what I'm saying. He looks he looks rough in uh, well, Blackbird. I think is the name of it. The well, one with Hauser and uh, Leota went hard yeah, in yeah, life. All right. Did. Did. I mean, he got a good 68 sick. years yeah. out. Right. He, he lived looked, that life. Like if you can live Ray Liotta's life and make it 68 years, you've won. Yeah. yeah. And nobody ever bitched about his performance either. Like he was every, brilliant in that. Every actor. He was. Every actor that works with him was always like, man, look, did he go hard? Yes, but he never missed. The motherfucker never missed. Good for Ray, Ray Liotta. But don't get Chantex. Get some fume here. Uh, these things. What, what are you packing those? Because you had one the other day. Yeah, it's uh, – fuck. Somebody moved them. I guess they're out in the thing now. But there are these little uh, white fiber sticks mm -hmm. that are soaked in something, right? There's some soaked Peppermint. In peppermint, yeah, yep. and other stuff like that. Um, tastes really good. Yeah. Tastes very good, actually. So whether you're an ex-smoker or a current smoker who struggles with cravings, fume – is the perfect tool for you. Head to breathefume.com slash drinking bros. Use the promo code drinking bros to save 10% off your entire order. That is 10% off your entire order when you head to breathe, B R E A T H E F U M dot com slash drinking bros and use the promo code drinking bros with checkout. Quit naturally with fume and use drinking bros to save 10%. At breathefume.com slash drinking bros. There is no E in fume, by the way. Last but not least, we got our store, D'Anthony. Store's open. Yeah, open for business. It's rocking, dude. Uh, that bro box last month was dope. That was Jesse's box. Yeah. That was the old crime corner. Next box. Uh, next up is the freedom round. So we, we've got a bunch of freedom related That's shit coming cool. out. Um, yeah, so it just ships to your house, and then every month you get a new bro box. There's a new... Sh there's Straw a, hats are dope as shit. A yeah. lot of people are posting those. There's I've got a, two of them. There's a new design, BDE. It's Big Don Energy. Oh, okay. Um, probably could have put made the D look like his head, but... Yeah. You know, yeah. We, didn't wanna, we didn't want to make it too complicated for the printing, but we got all <laughs> kinds of fun funny shit on here there's tons dude the hats are amazing we have the snapbacks we're we're all full of hats go to drinkingbros.com just click on the store and you're good to go and it supports the show and most of this stuff comes in baby clothes too yeah right <laughs> that's awesome so you know you want to use your baby to make political points obviously. yes i agree i agree do you have kids flo no one on the way Man. though you you had a long pause there. What happened? Well, I get. I'm just thinking. Yeah. I'm how long? Of, who's who's gonna be watching this? And, how a lot and, of people? And, and is my wife gonna murder me? Because uh, how far are you along? She's uh, 25th week. No, you. Okay. The wife has nothing to do with this. It's true. It's, it's it's it is all me. You learn when you have a child. No, no, it's about you, the men. You do realize like whatever they're feeling, you get those symptoms. 100. percent Yeah. Yeah. Oh, too boy. fake. Too fake. I'm. I guess we don't need to have Andrew Tate on the show anymore. <laughs> no, we don't. Just <laughs> let these two assholes talk. We don't. Uh, so when's the due date? Do you know? 
December 10th. Oh, that's dope, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You excited? Army oh. Navy game is right. I know, right? I'm missing it. It's okay. After last year, pretty. Or have the baby off. at the game. It's a plan. She's not really up for that, but you know. Well, it's supposed we to. He, if he's smart, he'll come in early. Yeah. Yeah. Winter, winter's supposed to be fucking brutal this year. I heard. Really? So it's gonna. You remember what it's, two two years ago it was like fucking seven degrees. Yeah. At the Army Navy game, we're sitting there and it's like, all right, we're fuck. This is not worth it. Is it in I, Massachusetts this year? Is it, I, uh, I don't think yeah, it's in Philly. It's yeah, it else. switched, right? Bob, yeah. where, where is the Army Navy game this year? It wasn't Philly. I, I think they rotate, right? So it's either New York. Yeah, Baltimore, but the last three have been Philly. in Philly. The okay. last three were in Philly, I think. We went to two of them in Philly, <laughs> and it was a blast. Um, yeah, I their love tailgate Philly. setup there at Philly is fun, man. We had a good time in Philly. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, I this, was. We this were... one's in Philly as well. Oh, it is. Oh, is it? All right, great. I think it's going to be in Virginia sometime well, in the next it. couple of years it's as well. It's going to be at, uh, in uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts too at some point. They just announced the next like six years or whatever the fuck they're doing. That's a fun game, man. I we, I tell people all the time. I'm like, dude, if that's not on your bucket list, it should be. Um, just to see it in person and 100%. see everybody yeah. go nuts, man. It's, next year's it's at a Gillette. Blast. Next year's at Gillette. Yeah. Oh That'll shit! Be fun. Boston. Then Boston. it's in. That's gonna be cold. Then oh, it's in yeah. uh, D.C. at the fucking Redskins place. All right. We're definitely we're going to that one too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for to sure. Scott about that. Gillette is a tough one, man. Just because there's nothing close to it. Yeah. Definitely. I don't think I've been to that stadium actually. <laughs> yeah, Have you ever even been to Foxborough before? No. It's never not went like, to Foxborough. For a team that's been that the for two teams, three te- four teams that have been this successful for this long. Mm-hmm. Right, like the Bruins and Celtics have had ups and downs. I guess the Patriots have had a couple years where they weren't great, but for the most part, the Red Sox look. They won over the last twenty years. They've won multiple championships, uh, usually a playoff contender, and we all know what the Patriots have done. And they haven't. It's almost like uh, uh, where the Packers Stadium is. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing fucking around. Build, nothing. build a goddamn destination for one of the best sports franchises that exists. In, in their case, in Boston, it's one of the best sports cities. Like, the garden and all that shit is cool, but out in Foxborough, like, what the fuck are you yeah. going to do? Man? Yeah, I enjoy yeah. going to Boston, too. It's a blast, yeah. but uh, I don't even know where that is in relation to the city. It's like 45 minutes away, at least. Mm. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Why the fuck would you do that? And think about this. Real estate and... too high? Well, it's the same thing that fucking San Francisco did. Or the, yeah, which the I 49ers. Hate. Yeah, it uh, yeah, sucks. They're in Santa dumb. Clara now. Uh, that, that's a a good 50-minute drive from San Francisco. It's 50, 58, yeah. 58 minutes from down from Boston to Foxborough. Yeah, Fuck what I've heard, that. too, is uh, Foxborough is just an absolute beating to try to get to and out. Yeah. Like in and out on game day. Just So I, I, that's involved. why I, 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 have no, I don't understand why they're going to do the game up there. I mean – I don't either. Like I the, mean, the I, link, I know they wanted to switch. The link but. is the fucking perfect. They just have it Philly every year. I know. Like just the surrounding it is area. Awesome. It's that's it is the, awesome. Man. To, I mean, they could do the it at Jerry World and shit too. For but tailgate. They only do mm-hmm. it in places where there's military bases, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in, is in, there one up there? Uh, well, Philly's close to uh, no, no, Boston, Annapolis, but Boston. And, pff, I'm sure there's a Navy base up there. Yeah. And okay. Then, yeah, probably. I don't know. But yeah, that's a strange one. Uh, either way, we're going back to Philly this year. That'll be a blast. Hey. 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 I like Philly, dude. I'm not going to shit on it. No, Philly's cool. Uh, downtown Philly, mm-hmm. they've cleaned up, and it's nice. Uh, Wait, I've, nice. I've enjoyed it the last – Dan and I have gone, what, fuck, three or four years in a row? Um, not last year. No, pre-COVID, obviously, but uh, yeah. it, was, it was always a great time. As long as you don't get robbed by 15-year-olds on dirt bikes. Eh, I'm not even worried about that. Uh, no, that's that's more Baltimore. That either. Yeah. It's more Baltimore. No, that's Philly. Yeah, Baltimore's got – Now, got, Baltimore, are they doing the dirt bike thing? Oh, yeah. ever go – to go to again camden like yards good. is pretty fucking dope uh, it is but you're in the middle of dude it's fun yeah it's fun it's just, just, you don't know you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> you have you no idea you're gonna be alive you don't know if you would be running around with no shoes in the middle of the night <laughs> being chased you know <laughs> that is one of my favorite power from my hooligan days uh, one of my favorite power moves was to take somebody's shoes <laughs> oh yeah because it's really like, you can lose there's a lot of things that can happen to you that you can explain right but you it's hard for a grown man to explain how he lost his shoes and that sound you sound like a child, like I fucking. They took my shoes, man. Like what? it's real shameful. Yeah, it is. It's real shameful. I had a buddy blackout uh, at the Ohio State game maybe three or four years ago, just on the front porch. And that, now the place he lives is nice. And he woke up without shoes. Uh, shoes were gone, and uh, and they took his belt too, which was oh, they fun. Some, someone stole his shit. Yeah, oh, uh, right cool. off of him. Wow. And he was sleeping on the porch. I mean, he was out cold. Uh, yeah. So they got his wallet, his belt. And his shoes. Yeah, that's disrespectful. Well, 
but it's pretty fucking funny where you're just like, hey, dude, you're that blackout. You don't know somebody's taking off your belt. Bro, we've, all been, in my house we've, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> we've all been there. Outside the house, though? Oh, probably. Where's Kyle? <laughs> Where's College Park? That's where you went to school, right? Yeah, Maryland. Where, Maryland, where, where yeah. is it though? It is right, right north on, of DC. Yeah, right yeah. on the border of DC. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's kind of a—is it one of the dicey areas or one of the suburb areas? College Park is incredibly dicey. Okay. So yeah. it's not like Silver Spring or any of that bullshit. No, it's close. I mean, it's not far from Bethesda, Silver Spring, mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty bad. And there's a massive uh, uh, group of um, MS-13 oh, out there boy. in that area. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. In DC. And uh, just in a, in a part of a. I didn't know that. Area. Yeah, I hate going to DC. Do you enjoy it? I'm sure you go a lot, right? I lived there. I lived there for you know a couple of years. I I mean I don't know, man. I I enjoyed it, right? Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it because I just like food. I like being able to just move around without having to. If call. you go to the right places, it's not yeah. bad. If you go to the fucking like the local bars downtown, it's like everybody is talking. They're all oh, the most important yeah. people in the world. Yes, yeah. and they're all they think that this one fucking committee thing they're working on right now is the most important thing that's ever happened. It's just like, shut the fuck up. I came here to make bad decisions. Yep. Not to hear about the ones you're making right now. Yeah. Uh, and it's all the, the same. Like, they all sit in, like, cliques where it's, like, oh, Republicans, yeah. Democrats. Uh, all they talk about is politics. It reminds me of Hollywood. It's Hollywood, but for politics. Well, it's politics. it's yeah. more like the OC with politics, to be yeah. honest. It's, like it, there, it's like a fucking high school thing. It's the cliques, and and it's not even like right left cliques even all the time. It's just weird cliques, and then some one group of people will walk into the bar, and everyone's like, oh, psst, 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 "Yeah, this is you that was." God, you're a bunch of cunts. Shut the fuck up. Man. The other part about it too is none of them wanted the jobs they currently had. So I oh they're all ladder climbers yeah yeah, yeah. When I, so when I when I was there um, I was there <laughs> to go to and talk to Congress and Senate yeah I and, saw a, that. and a car drove through the lobby of our hotel so they were like I hey it's gonna have to be <laughs> it's gonna be a couple hours before you you check in I was like no problem let me get a fun video and then I'll I'll go and I was like where's a restaurant near here. They pointed me to this restaurant. And I went over there, and, and that's what I saw. It was the same yeah. thing Dan was describing. But there's a ton of great restaurants there. There is. Oh, 100%. Like, there is. Fucking Haleo is one of my it, favorite restaurants But in the since world. I had two hours to kill, I got to overhear all of these conversations mm. for two hours. And I was like, holy shit. And none of them wanted the current jobs they had. They were talking about what they were going to do afterwards. So some people were just working there to work for Congress and Senate so they could get recommendations mm. or recommendation letters to go on and do other jobs <laughs> In real life, uh, some of them actually did want to move up and become a Congress, you know, person or, or a senator or something like that. And I was like, "All right, cool, but do any of you actually do what you want to do right now?" I mean, now? their jobs suck. Like dude, think about this. Like, yeah, you, that's you're a working, job. You're working for, you know, a senator or a congressman, congresswoman. You're literally you get there an hour before they get there. You stay there three hours after they get there to prep for the next day. Mm -hmm. You carry things. You sit there. You you have to know everyone that they're talking to more than likely because if that you know person you work for is like who's this who's that. So depending on the job and and if you're on a bottom, so you work right for that person mm -hmm. in front of you. So it just sucks. But a lot of these folks do it because you know they're they, I think I think they have good intentions. A lot of them like right? hey I'm going to serve and. But they, they get into the business and realize, like, holy crap, like, this is, <coughs> I'll never get out of this unless I have a very clear game plan. Mm. And what you see is, man, if you're successful there, if you suck it up, like those folks you're probably hearing, the Boeings, the Lockheeds, the Raytheons, they're going to, you know, government affairs team is going to start pulling these people because they have connections. They know uh, how, you know, the Capitol, Capitol Hill operates. They know the right people to go talk to. Uh, they know about policies. And so these people go from making no money and hating their lives to getting you know, $250,000 base salary. So, Without any real skill other than just knowing people. Yeah. Like a lot of the time. Well, it's, it's, it's politics. Pretty yeah. it that's is. what politics yeah. is. I mean, you, you ever look at politicians and you, you ask yourself, like, how are you like, making these type of decisions or recommendations? Like, yeah. what, what have you done in your life to get you here to be now a subject matter expert enough that you can impact a policy? Like that's just absolutely completely fascinating. And the starting the starting salary for congressional aid is like thirty thirty two thousand. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not same it's as not. Hollywood. If you're an agent's assistant, but it tops a dog it, shit it tops out at like sixty, I think. Okay. Right. So it's not like there's that. That's not a. That's not an end state for anybody. I don't think it's hard to live like that in DC. Mm -hmm. it's so expensive. Oh, yeah, AOC told expensive. us all about that. She sure did. She's she barely. Was, she's got a hundred forty thousand dollar Tesla, but it's hard to find an apartment in DC. Yeah, calm, she, calm she's down. barely scraping by. You yeah. know. 
Um, God bless her. With you, like I, I'm always curious because you are a Medal of Honor recipient. Has anybody ever asked you to run? Where they're like, hey, dude, just based on who you are and, and everything else, like uh, that would seem like a layup to be a congressman. It's funny because, you know, I took a lot of shit for um, what I, in 2016, when I, you know, when I spoke at a Democratic uh, National Convention, right? Mm -hmm. Took a lot of shit from my lost friends over that. Um, and as a Republican, my entire life, I just, that was just the right move for me, right? Um, and we can get into that if we want. But I have had a lot of people ask me to run or, think I should run or make recognition by running, but I'll never. You know, there, there's zero chance that I'll ever run. And the reason behind that, and I asked this you know, to the president, which, which was when you first got into this gig, right, this was like your dream and Obama, did, you know, are you doing what you expect to be doing, right? Because at a certain point, you have to sell your, your soul to the party. You have yeah. to sell your soul to your donors, right? And what was his answer? Uh, he just kind of chuckled and was just like, listen, you know, so you got to make sacrifices, you know, but I'm out here trying to do the best I can. I right? mean, you can sacrifice your time, your body, you can sacrifice uh, finances. What you can't sac sacrifice is your ethics and honor. And that's what people in politics do. This is what he's saying. He yeah. refuses to do that. Yeah. I just, it does, it's not for me. I think I can have more of an impact behind the scenes. And that's what the smart ones do, in my, in my personal opinion. So, you know, just kind of in the shadows. So you're going to be Carl Rove then. Yeah. Right? No. Yeah, be a nice little Carl Rove dude mm -hmm. up there. Or, uh, but I'm not that interested, if that makes sense. Like, I'm more interested in, in helping support our veteran community, mm. right? That's mm -hmm. just, to me, that's where my passion is. I don't have that passion to be in politics. It's just not me. So I think I'd be a terrible politician uh, because I would be focusing on just things <laughs> I really like. I think it would be a, a very fun and rewarding experience if it operated as intended, right? Well, like, if it was a – you, you get – you're term limited, so you you, yes. you go to uh, D.C. for a short amount of time and do whatever the fuck, and you come back like you – instead of coming back having fucked over the country a bunch and, and then eventually losing or never leaving politics in the first place, you come back seen as something more like uh, people that were in war. You know what I mean? Like you went and served your country, and now you're coming back. Yeah. And there's some respect to that. But if I somebody's like, oh, yeah, I used to be in Congress, like, oh, man. You must be a piece of shit. <laughs> right. But it's funny. I'm seeing more and more veterans, you mm -hmm. know, uh, get going going in and making that commitment, try to become a politician. And I think that's good. That's a good thing. Um, because I, there's one thing that I'm, I'm a firm believer in in the military. It's that there's no other job in the world, you know, not even firefighter, not even police officer. There's really no other job in the world where you can take absolutely completely different people from all parts of the world, right? I'm talking about white, black, gay, straight, you know, atheist, Christian, Muslims, GED, you know, PhD, whatever you want to call it, and then put them into one environment, put them, you know, put them in the same uniform, and then deploy them across the world to go fight some random people, people we could classify as bad, and then these people who are potentially Democrat, Republican, find a way to work with each other. But don't, not only that, but love each other to the point where they're willing to die for each other. That's the one thing I fell in love with the military about. It's like, I couldn't believe it, right? I had a guy, you know, I had guys from Mexico. I'm French, right? Latinx. Latinx, <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, you have dudes from, you know, guys with master's degrees. You had guys with GEDs, all, part, all, all, all around the world, right? And here they are sitting together, and they're like, holy shit. We kind of don't like each other, but we're going to figure out a way to, like, work with each other. And that turns into, I, mean, I really like them. And now you're at my wedding and things like that. We forget that, man. As soon as we leave the military, we forget that. Yeah. And it's like, no, nah, that person's my enemy again. It's like, no, nah, fuck no, dude. You're willing to die for him. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, look, the other people who believe differently than you politically are never your enemy. That's not how that works, right? It's always the guy. It's, wow, that's really coming down. It's all, there it's, was a storm. That, yeah. Any, anybody that's I'm trying so to, like, flight. anybody that's trying to convince you of something, like, especially if they're trying to convince you to dislike someone else, that person is an asshole. Mm. It, it was this. It's the same in the Mean Girls movies. Not just the one called Mean Girls, but all that Mean Girl bullshit. It's the same in every fucking uh, business movie you've ever seen, where one partner is trying to turn another partner against their third partner, or whatever the fuck. Right? The person that's in the trenches trying to influence how you feel about somebody else, especially in a negative way, that person is a piece of shit, and all they're trying to do is distract you so they can reach into your wallet. 
that's all that that's all that ever is yeah you can't pay attention to that shit it's funny because i lost i lost a couple of friends when i went i spoke at the democratic national convention you know back in the day uh when hillary was running and when trump was running and the reason i did that is because uh, when i got blown up in august of 2012 a month later one of the guys next door was from benghazi uh-huh. right and so and i got to spend a lot of time with him and we chatted about what happened there and he gave me his perspective and which is not what i heard from the media at all right and everybody was blaming her i was like okay whatever i thought there's another person to blame that's the president of the united states to be honest with you in that case but you know that's who am i to be a such a matter expert and then i saw her um over the course of the next year and a half I, almost like uh, one every every month on a saturday she'd come in and go talk to Gold Star um, families, or she'll go talk to wives and, you know, the women, right? And no fanfare. So in my head, the way I was thinking about it is like, I can't, I could not associate with Trump. I couldn't, couldn't do it, right? Everything about me just couldn't do it. Because I, I, this guy voted for as a Democrat his entire life, and now he's coming in, the way I saw it, was hijacking my Republican Party. A lot so, of people felt that way about Bernie Sanders on the left as well. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just that they hated Social, uh, democratic socialism. They just thought he was hijacking the party. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how I felt, right? And the crazy part is, I, so I'm here I am I'm trying to figure out, I was like, man, I have the opportunity to vote. So that's my right. And I was trying to pick somebody and I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to, I'll go here. And so when I went and spoke, it wasn't about like, hey, anti Trump or none, none of that stuff. I would never do that. It was about veterans. So I spoke for fucking 60 seconds. And then all these people made this whole thing. He's anti-Trump, anti this. I was like, I never said that. I never, I never went and said his, you know, his name ever, ever. I never said anything wrong about him, right? My preference as an American to go vote this way. Dude, people crush me. There was a whole website calling me like an Al-Qaeda kid, you know, me and Obama being like, you know, Al-Qaeda people and stuff. It was crazy. But Well, you know, looking back at it in hindsight, uh, it was such a polarizing time, especially that election. Things were so fucking intense and it was so divided that no matter which side you were on, right or left, you were getting crucified either way. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you don't know unless you're going through it. And, well, you well, just happen to be going through it at that point, you, you know? know? I'd do it all over again. You know why? This is the creepiest thing that's ever happened in my life. In uh, sync or a Backstreet Boys, Lance Bass, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. He was, he was in the crowd right in front of me when I spoke. And he stared at me. And I felt so weird this entire time. Here I am. Like, I'm trying to, I'm speaking at the National Con- Democratic Convention, and it's fucking Lance Bass, like, staring at me. And I'm like, that's fucking Lance Bass. Yeah, dude. That's really weird. And then in did the back chat room, with him? Did I what? Did you chat with him? No, didn't. I chatted, um, uh, who was in there? Um, uh, Chloe Moretz, uh, uh, that, that actress. Chloe from, Grace Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's Giorgio cool. loves her. From Kick-Ass. Yeah, yeah from Kick-Ass. I actually had, had dinner with her and her brothers um, about a month later. I saw um, 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 Perry, what's her name? Um, I'm fucking Katie terrible. Perry. Katie Perry was there. Yep. Uh, a couple cool people were there. Yeah, that was the year of the fucking P- Katie Perry bodysuit. Sure Remember was. That? Sure was. That, that uh, fucking whatever she wore, The it was the H with the... Arrow on it, yeah, right? the Hillary or whatever. The that was the Hillary it. slogan for With sure. But dude, you, you go to you go to these things for a party. Snoop Dogg. I went to the Snoop Dogg concert. Well, or a <laughs> private party after. That was a fucking blast. Oh, th- dude, people don't know how much money they spend behind the scenes and all that shit. That year in particular too was when every rock star or pop star got together and they were like, "We're getting Hillary in office and we're gonna yeah, perform yeah. all over." And they were doing shows up until the night before. I remember. I think it was North Carolina that was a swing state back then. Uh, I think Springsteen had played or Lady Gaga. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they went all out for that shit uh, back then. And, uh, and it was pretty crazy. But I think that, that experience alone sort of guided me towards, like, I'd never want to be in this position again. Like, you, I just don't want to be it. I didn't like it because people, you know, it's the media, right? Mm-hmm. And it's social media, sorry. And it's like, they'll fucking shit on you. They don't, they've never met you. But for 60 seconds, man, right there, they're formed an opinion on you and you're a piece of shit. And they will do everything to destroy you. And so I was like, you know what? Eh, it's not for me. Yeah. I give a fuck, but it's not for me. Who are you, who are you looking forward to then in 2024? Man, that's, I'm actually just looking forward to just seeing who the hell wants to even run. Yeah. Right? I think it's going to be, this is going to be the most, probably the most fascinating election. Oh, yeah. Because is, is, is Biden going to go again? Right? Question number one. Will right? be, is he still going to be alive? I mean, you know, that's a question. That's yeah. part of the whole question, right? It, does he want to continue doing this? Is, 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 is his health going to be there? Right? Um, he would who, be 82 
when he ran if that that's happens. me that's getting pretty old that's getting pretty old <laughs> no shit i mean but but you got to ask the question, would he make it to 86 for four years? Like, I hope so, because my dad's 84, so I bet my, my I want my dad to go to 88. Yeah, but your you dad know? isn't cranking out 18-hour White House days. True. No. That shit fucks True. you up. It yeah. is unbelievable. Not that he's doing it, for sure. Right, like, right, he's right. in a fucking basement, <laughs> like with a shawl in his lap, for sure, right now. I did say this, though, because I, I was just there. He, he was there. Uh, to his credit, he was look, there. Look, I, I'm, I, listen, I met Biden. I know Biden. Um, I'm, I'm part of the American Battle Com- um, American Battle Monument Commission, uh, which is like a huge honor to be able to serve that because all you take care of is the monuments and cemeteries for our, you know, our warriors around the world. And I also this, and I said this to you know President Trump, Obama, I also, whoever is in in the seat, I support. Right? That's just me. I know I'm in a minority of it. Right? I have my opinions, but I'll give my opinions of that individual when they leave. I don't see. I don't think so. I think if the if the country is going well. Nobody really wants to rock the boat. Dan talks about it all the time. It usually comes down to how it's doing fiscally. The economy is the number one predictor. Of correct. The boat, 100%. Uh, I mean, correct. So, that- like, dude, I, I'll never shit on anybody if the country's doing well at all. Because, um, uh, like, look, you take me. I'm a Republican, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't like Bush. Um, I thought the country was rolling during the Clinton years because uh, that was, like, dot-com and all that other stuff. And, like, everybody was doing well financially. Fine. Uh, Bush you know, an unnecessary war and a lot of people didn't like him. I didn't like Obama. I don't like Obamacare uh, and all that other shit. Policy wise, I thought Trump did a very good job, but then, you know, speaking in Twitter wise, not so good of a job. Yeah. Uh, Biden country's not going great right now. We're, we're in a recession that nobody wants to talk about and now we're redefining it. And then we're just giving money away to, to Ukraine and other shit, the green new deal, which is disguised as the inflation act and all that other shit. I don't think that's going to be great. Uh, I'm looking for somebody in 2024 that, you know, would at least bring us back in the right direction. But I'm, I'm with you. Who that is, I don't know. I, I, On the Republican side, I think it's DeSantis probably. I, or, I mean, that's that's the thing. I, that's probably the the one thing I'm really looking forward to is 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 he going to run? Is he going to run if Trump <clears throat> runs? Oh boy, I, they just had an article about this over the weekend. They were. Like, Man. I think he's right now. Like he's. But do you want to get steamrolled by all that is Trump? When you're probably one of the best candidates I'm not, on that side? I'm not, I don't think he would, as long as he doesn't say negative shit about Trump. If, yeah. he, if he just stays, if he's stuck, stuck to policy and, like, really disciplined, you got to be really, like, you have to have your whole team disciplined yes. as well. Yep. Yeah. But, like, yep. do that, and then if Trump blows up at him, then Trump loses that interaction because he just sits there and takes it. Right. Also, you know I mean? like, do you want to elect a dude who's such a bitch he won't run against someone in a primary? Like, I, after that, later? I, I think... I, see, I don't see it that way. I think you, you got to be smart, right? And he's you gotta, young too. He's, what, yeah, he exactly. And he's yeah. like, he, it, it, to him, it's like this: is do I want to start a battle and start disconnecting now from a whole group of people that potentially mm. would vote for me? Mm-hmm. At least, definitely in twenty twenty eight. Yeah, right? right, right. It'd be a it'd be a yeah. much different story if Trump didn't control so much of the conservative side. Of, yeah, and that, that's why it's so hard to see what's gonna, like to to understand what's going to happen because. Somebody's going to have to give on that side. Otherwise, I'm with you. I don't think DeSantis gets involved in, you know. I think the only way DeSantis gets involved is this. If Trump is there. Even if, if, even if Trump runs. If he truly believes that if Trump runs and the next four years during his presidency, right, are destroy the party and that that's going to make him a guaranteed loss in 2028 and he feels like, you know what, I'll take my shot now. I'm going to piss off some people, but I'm going to do it the right mm-hmm. way. In the end, if I win... They're all going to come towards me, right? And maybe even if he does beat, you know, Trump primaries, then Trump will endorse him, right? And or just support him. Then he he's a big winner there. But I mean, right. there, it would be hard for Trump to not endorse him, regardless of what happened, right? Because their policies are pretty much a mirror of one another. And he lives in his state. Yeah. So I mean, it, so it'd be like, what what would you say? What would Trump have to say negative about DeSantis? You know what I mean? That he rigged the election. <laughs> I mean, who he, the fuck knows? He right? said the same thing when Cruz won Iowa. Yeah, like it's not the, the, the twenty twenty wasn't the first time he said that. Right, like he says that all the time. So and he, he sank the fucking Georgia Senate races mm. by saying don't vote. It's all it's a bullshit system. So yeah, it, I, I think Georgia's well. I think Georgia's blue anyways, man. And like I, it's my home state. Uh, I just think they're they're fucking blue anyways. Yeah, but and he, it was getting closer over the years, and then. It finally tipped. It's hard to say how many people didn't vote also in the in the in the uh, uh, general election, 
because of all the anti mail in voting press they did. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, I don't know that that necessarily helped their cause. Why? Explain this to me. So you have, let's say the election was next month and I think they may be up to something with voting. Why am I spending campaign dollars on that? Like, what, what do you, what's the expected outcome of that? Like, hey, they're trying to rig it, so you better show up and vote. That's, that, that's an incongruous statement. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a game that you can't win. Go play. Nobody would fucking do that. So they're, just logically speaking, quite a few people didn't go vote. Who would have voted for Trump? because of all that bullshit you, right. you have to assume that is the case right? I, I, I do and I, and I also think georgia in particular has pretty weak candidates on well the that was a, that was side. A, those are runoffs right so that was right. later right um I, but even like I look at now uh, herschel walker is, <laughs> is the, yeah. the primary winner he's up against whoever the fuck it is osa for is it him or no he's up against warnock, warnock. who's warnock, the okay. way weaker I mean, this candidate is, this is what pisses me off man i'm like what but happened to the party like, it's 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 herschel walker i think a lot of it if you look at it look up in pennsylvania with dr oz for example like <clears throat> i think he's going to get beat in pennsylvania when you start going towards these celebrities uh because it's a personality cult right yeah, so, that's right what it is. And, yeah, and so that's so. when it gets tough um whereas we've had a lot of people on this show who have come in with great ideas and, hey, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this. They've all lost. Um, nobody's won yet who's been on this show, which is pretty fucking wild to me because um, we've had a lot on over the years. Keep track. Yeah, well, you want somebody right, maybe, to win maybe, and be like, maybe hey, I'll run. dude. Because <laughs> right now it's a fucking curse. Like, if you come on Drinker Bros, you're going to lose. Um, so we'll see. Joe Kent is up. I think he might win. He'll probably win, yeah. I, yeah, I'd like to see Joe Kent win uh, up there. But uh, And then I think Alex Scarletos made it through again. Uh, he he was pretty he's close last Minnesota, time. He's in Minnesota, right? No, he's in Washington. O- Washington? Or Oregon. Washington. Washington. Oregon, 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 yeah. Oregon, yeah. Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. Yeah. 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 How's he doing? Uh, he's doing good. And he's in it for the right reasons. Yeah. So I, I like Alec, and I, I believe in everything he's doing. Good. Whereas most of these other people where you're just like, man, why the fuck are you there? What, what are you doing? Like, uh, who was the wheelchair kid in North Madison. Carolina? Yeah, Madison Cawthorn. It's like, all right. Dude. What are you doing I here? Just saw him. Did I, you really? Yeah, I, randomly I was at the Capitol for uh, Woody Williams Lang. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I saw him wheel himself out. You know, it's just like, huh. Maybe that's he'll, the kid. Maybe he'll run for governor of Texas. <laughs> what? Just change one. We out. love wheelchairs here, dude. Yeah. Dude. It goes from one dude, wheelchair to another. Here. Come on, man. Yeah, what? No, I don't want him to be. A, it go goes ahead. from one wheelchair to another, and that's what Texas is now. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a wheelchair, you're not going to be governor of our state. Yeah. I'm sorry. But this is what happens to a party by the. So the Democratic Party has been pushing social agenda shit and economic agenda shit hardcore for 30 years trying to get shit done, trying to pass health care, which started in the early 90s with Hillary Clinton on the stump for that shit, mm-hmm. finally got that done. They've been pushing for Green New Deals, finally got that shit done. All this stuff, they've been working towards a common goal. What the fuck have conservatives done in the past 30 years except for uh, preside over the largest expansion of the federal government in the history of this country? What have they done? What conservative thing have they done? I mean, look. Except for Trump putting conservative justices on the bench, but I'm not even sure how I feel about that. You know what I mean? Like what do you a, mean? Like that's I, I don't, a politicized bench is not a very good idea. Well, it's been I like mean. that. That's that's been the system for how many fucking years? It's always the president. Thirty, that maybe. Them. No, it's always the president that appoints them. Yeah, but it's like these. You got to go through these huh? litmus, You got to go through the whole these litmus tests for different fucking political agenda items. Shouldn't have anything to do with fucking the court. Yeah, but but it is now, and that's that's all the Supreme Court is. I mean, it's like you go through. Eight years, seven years of school to get your juris doctorate. You go serve as an attorney, then become a judge. You serve as a judge for a while, then you become a Supreme Court justice. What about that entitles you to an opinion, a political opinion, over everybody in the fucking country? It's it's about the law and how the law is applied, not political opinions. Yeah, right. You know what I mean. But that's become the gig now, essentially. Well, then we should dissolve the Supreme Court, just like every other fucking federal agency. Yeah. Uh, and we might get there someday. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I can't fucking wait for that shit. <laughs> we you might know, get there someday. You know who's not afraid of all this shit going away are people who can take care of themselves. Yeah. Right? So the, I, I guess the uh, immunization to this whole fucking chaotic uh, country we live in is just to learn to take care of yourself. They don't have to worry about what happens. Mm. That, that's, that, by the way, that's what we're talking about in Rogan. That was yeah. funny. But you uh, know, that comment earlier, though, that's, that's, 
I think I'm in a minority when I say this. I, I truly say this, like in terms of supporting the president, mm -hmm. you know, the acting president. That is like, that's uh, maybe I'm an idiot, you know, but that's just the way I look at it. Now, I'm okay to go out there and judge mm. a president, you know, a past president. And, sure. You know, but like it's the, we just, we've just lost this, this, this common sense. And I'm not talking about, I don't, I, Call it out, right? You see it. This is what you do. Like, you call it out. But, like, I'm talking about, like, having dinner conversations with my friends. We knew no nothing about nothing. Mm -hmm. And they were here shitting on presidents, whatever it was Trump, what is Biden, Obama. And you're like, man, you know, like, you, you're reading the dumb fucking news, mm -hmm. right? You're believing that stuff. And then that is now your opinion, and you're spreading it across everywhere. It's like a virus. Mm -hmm. And it drives me crazy. So that's why I just stay away from it. Yeah. I, I think you should root for every president who's in office. You just want the country to succeed. Well, I root for the country. I don't give a fuck about that guy. Right, but he's whether you like it or not, he's the leader. Right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not rooting for. I really. I, I don't root for the person. Mm. I root for the position yeah. because that's the country. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and and you you. I mean, by the way, that doesn't mean I don't get pissed off. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I'm like shit. All right. Let's do better. If it's all fucked up, let's do better next time. We just I, can't seem to be doing that. I really that. think we should start voting on policy and not on politicians. We should start voting on policy as a country, and we should hire people to in, like do to the policy up. part. But not at $450,000 a year or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? None of that bullshit. Like, you're the CEO of uh, this super successful company. We're going to use well, – we're going to fucking uh, – borrow you for a couple of years you're going to run the country for whatever fucking pay we give you and then you go back that's it the end you know mm -hmm. what i mean shit like that like there's a what the fuck are we doing we're having popularity contests to decide ab about 500 people to make fucking moral and ethical decisions for our country it doesn't make any fucking sense why i don't understand how anybody is okay with any of this shit well it's been it's been the system forever and i don't know how it gets broken at this point um, and then the other part about this is, let's say you were to be able to vote on your phone, right? Uh, on an app where you're just like, all right, great. Here's the policy. We're all going to vote for this. Don't you think there with as many people that live in California, it would all be left no matter what. Like you, you could never pass anything conservative, right? I don't know. I don't know. That's, I don't know. That's a tough one. Tr a tricky one, right? Yeah. Um, because everybody says that all the time. The difference would be California more than likely because I think there's, what, 40 million or 42 million people that live 40, there? 40 or so, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And they, like, because I've heard this debate, too, where it's just like, let's just vote on the policies. And they were like, well, can we take out California? And no. Then so, so you do this based on the fucking Constitution of the United States, which says everything not, not right here goes back to the state level. So California can do whatever the fuck it wants, right? But if it's not something specifically enumerated in the Constitution as a, as a responsibility of the federal government, then no, it's not votes per state. That, that's, they could do that in their own state, sure, and they do. They have ballot measures every year in California. Yeah. But like it, under no circumstances should, should people in disparate geographical and political locations be deciding things for other people. Yeah. That's the entire point of federalism. You know what's crazy? that We, we talk about you know, you know, presidents, and we talk about the Senate and Congress, but like local politics are so important. Right for the way you you live your they're life. They're dirtier, by the way, than federal. Like, I, like they get you know, away with everything. Oh, it's like, fucking right? gnarly, dude. And local <laughs> politics are so important, and people just don't give a shit. It's because it's not about principles. It's a fucking popularity contest. It's a personality cult. Yeah, and, and it puts you in. I say this all the time on this and citizen, this show and citizen. It puts you in a position where you have to defend shitty behavior because you've now aligned yourself with this party or this person. Fuck that, man. That doesn't make any sense. That's that's the system we have in place it's right not, now. It's not. It's not. It's the way the system is being used, but that is not the system we have in place. Not even close. But you have to vote, and you have to pick a party, essentially, I think, in order to get something passed or done. There's nothing in the Constitution about political parties, my man. I, I understand. Why, then why do we have them? Uh, that's a good question. James Madison tried to shut it down, but it didn't work out. It, it happened because... <laughs> Man, I mean, a lot of it is Alexander Hamilton, like pushing. I watched the play. I don't believe it. Well, he was a great rapper. No, but they didn't like rap back then. So it's like, well, we're gonna start our own faction and we're just gonna play fiddle music or whatever the fuck they listen to. Yeah. Tri corner hats versus like the Davy Crockett hat. Yeah. You know? And now it's 
here we are. But, but I think it, this is going to be the most uh, most interesting election in a long time. I'm more interesting. 24 than, this midterm coming up. Uh, midterm. 20, midterms will be crazy. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're doing a live crazy. show that night. That'll be nuts. Yeah, midterms are going to be crazy. I think people are going to wake up the next day and be like, oh, there's a different direction. A new, uh, one, one direction, maybe. One direction. Well, Hopefully we're back Harry at Styles it. is one, back. Yeah. It's called a callback joke in the biz. Uh, with uh, Look, I think Senate's going to be close, and I think it'll be down to one seat. Um, I think Congress will easily get back. I think Republicans will easily win mm. that. But uh, Senate is a tough one only because, like I was saying earlier with the candidates, uh, you got Dr. Oz out of Pennsylvania. Not good. Yeah. Okay. Herschel Walker He's, out I, of Georgia. I actually not think good. Oz is going to win. Really? Yeah. I don't think so. That that guy, do you know anything about that guy, the Fetterman guy who's running there? Yeah. Uh, I know that he's a fucking union hack. Yeah, he is. I, I He's a strange one, man. And it's he is a man of the people there. Like, he, he looks is. like. They, they love him. They there. love him they there. Do. And they, he, he reminds I everybody don't... of somebody's dad who's just out in the streets. Like, you ever seen one of his speeches? Uh, yeah. He's... He shows up in gym shorts. Yeah. He's got a hoodie on usually. He's tall as fuck. He's, there's he's no, a big dude. There, there are no. He's smart. There's not one member of Congress like that. There's a fucking reason for it. It's the same reason there's not going to be a fucking President Kyle. You know what I mean? Like whatever fucking people like in their off time and like, oh, you should have a beer with him. That's not how people vote. They don't vote like that. My he's lieutenant governor. He's lieutenant governor now. My if if it's on my bookie, by the way, my money would be on Fetterman to win. He's gonna win pretty easily. Yeah. I think. I think over. So here's what's gonna happen over the next couple of months. Millions and millions, tens of millions of dollars are gonna get pumped into that specific race, and the only people that are backing Fetterman are the teachers unions, and their budgets limited. Like there's a new dark money fucking spooky pack that just popped up for the conservatives with 1.6 billion just from one guy. Who right. was it? Do we know? Do you uh, know I don't know. Okay. It's on it's a, there's an article on CNN about it right yeah, now. Yeah, but you're not factoring in how unlikable Dr. Oz is. Yes. And yeah, and, that's fine, but again, it's like fucking it, a pretty haircut will get you a long way in politics, bud. Like it, it really will. We'll find out. I, I think it's going to come down to Ohio seats in Senate. It's uh, J.D. Vance there. Um, that's the guy that they're really pumping money into now. And I think that will be the swing state to, for Senate. But I think they'll get the House back. I just think candidate-wise, uh, yeah, Dr. Oz and, and Herschel Walker aren't going to do it. Well, well, Herschel this- forgot about 14 kids that he had. Dude, her, I, I don't even want to talk about Herschel Walker. It's a, sim- it's, a, it's, a, it's a waste of time. It's a symptom of what I'm talking about. Like a guy like that would never have made it to this position unless it was just a fucking personality cult. That's that's the only reason. Oh, yeah, 100%. Right? So I think you should have to do like – I think you should have to take an IQ test first. And you have to play you, – like you, you need a 120 IQ at minimum to serve any fucking yeah, anywhere. Yeah, I agree, but that would, that would probably nuke out three-fourths already. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like there, there's got to be something. And then maybe uh, some personality tests to see if they're a fucking sociopath. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. We'll I don't, find I don't out. Know. Take it. Take a look at that. We'll find out. That'll be a fun night, though. We'll yeah. We're doing a, a live show it'll be, here. It'll be. It'll be a good night. Yeah. It'll be fun. Do you vote? Do you go out and vote? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What, same what do you mean? Do you yeah. go out and vote? Some people don't vote. No, I vote. I yeah. vote. I vote too. I, I no think. matter what, I, I go and vote. You know why I vote? And and I I don't care if you do or don't. Right. I'm not the type of guy be like you didn't vote, so fuck you. Right. I I vote because I know that at least I can look at myself in the mirror and be like, huh, eh, uh, I I made my choice. Am I happy with it? Maybe, right? But I play my part. And that's- Same. And, and I think we are who we vote for. Um, and if there's a problem with it, it's like, well, that's what the fucking country decided, I guess. But at least I voted. But I have friends who don't vote. And they have some really good reasons behind it sometimes, right? It's just like I just I cannot you know, see myself supporting any of them. And so because I'm so removed from it, I'm going to just let the country decide. Okay. And I'll follow through. And, like, they're, right. and then they're fine with the decisions, right? I don't know. They're still a bitch, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what it always is. Yeah. That's what it always is. Like, all, the whole, this whole world is all a bunch of infantrymen. Mm. Yeah, it's just, you know, we just go out there and complain about everything that's yep. in front of us. Throw fucking rocks at each other when we're yeah. bored. Yeah, literally. <laughs> mm. That's exactly what we do. Rocks or pine cones, one of the two. If you're <laughs> yeah. Fort Bragg, it's pine cones because they're everywhere. That's funny. Uh, now's the point in the show. We get to the Drinking Bro of the Week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking brother week to? My dad. You know, it's it's it, he uh, he adopted me. He gave me his name. Um, he's a man of very few words, but when I needed the best advice, he gave it to me, even though sometimes it wasn't what I wanted to hear. 
Um, he showed up at every fucking game. When he wasn't traveling for work, every soccer game or judo or track meet, he was there in college too. Uh, you know, he just uh, he dedicated a lot of his, a lot of his life for me to give me these opportunities. So you know, if I if I wasn't for him, I'd still be in France, and I wasn't going in the right direction out there. Um, the opportunities were very different. So I'm very grateful to to him and. Uh, one of my goals in life is to make sure I fucking, you know, earn uh, earn his name. Right? Yeah. So. There's a lot of mimes in France. Is that what you were involved in? No. There's other stuff. The stuff that you were talking about earlier. Just kidding. It wasn't. Knifing people? Definitely knifing people. <laughs> I think I got, almost got knifed once. Yeah. Street crime. Did you? Yeah. It is, he's fucking. Well, so I love my dad, but sometimes he wasn't thinking. So I live in, uh, it's, when I got the medal, they, they wrote this article from the ghetto of Paris to the, you know, to the White House. And I was like, man, I live in the ghetto. So we went back and I checked where I lived. You know, you're talking about uh, bars and windows, mm -hmm. uh, the, the you know, double-sided doors full of metal. Like, you're like, yeah, I grew up here. Wow. Uh, it sucked. But then I remembered he brought me uh, a jersey or I think a T-shirt, a Chicago Bulls thing. And I went outside and it lasted about 35 minutes before I was that guy. I still had my shoes, but. I, they you took know, your shit? Oh, fuck yeah. yeah was it a Rodman jersey behind me? No, I think it was a Pippin jersey. Okay. Yeah, you they, don't want to be cruising around with fresh Jordans on. No, so. I didn't have the Jordans. The Jordans yeah. would never happen. But, yeah. I mean, it was like, I think it was a, it was like a fake jersey. It wasn't even like a real jersey, but it was a jersey. And they knew that you know, my mom was dating some American, so they just kept looking for me. They stole my game of war once, but I went to war for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I went. So I fought a lot uh, because of him. But – I guess my, maybe a little tougher. Yeah. Well, Rodman's <laughs> going to go free Britney Griner, so we're good on that. Hey, dude. Hey, he says he's going to do it. He's going to do it. What Look, if, man. What if he shows up and brings her back, dude? He probably will. That's the funniest part of this whole thing. <laughs> then he transitions and they team up on the on the Mercury next year and win the title. Fuck yeah, How dude. fucking dope would that be? It'd be great. He'd still give you 18 boards a game. Oh, I yeah. Think, I think so. Well, Easily. against... What's the, who's the tallest woman in the yeah, WBA? Yeah, but I think he's 60 like, now, I think right? it's Griner. It's what, Griner, what is yeah. she, like 6'7 or something? No, she's like 6'8, six, 6'9. Six, maybe yeah, that's, why he's, six, going to, maybe yeah, that's why he's going to get her is to train against her. Yeah. No, I just think it's funny. It's like you Rocky. And, and he does it. If he actually goes and, and does it, I think that dude, I mean, North Korea and Russia. What a crazy life. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first time something like this has happened. A lot of people don't remember because they weren't born when this shit happened, but... Some of our students got kidnapped in Iran, right, mm -hmm. back in the day. And it wasn't Jimmy Carter who got them out. As a matter of fact, it was a huge embarrassment to him that just after he lost re-election, Jesse Jackson got him out. Right. Yep. Right. So it's like celebrities in America getting people out of bad situations to the detriment of the sitting president. Is, is a, it's something that happens here. I don't know. I mean, but yeah, that's, that's a fair point. In this case, I just think it's comical. Right, Rodman's not gonna do anything to get hurt back. Right? We no, he's gonna cross up Putin know. and yeah. fucking dunk on his yeah. ass. I think he he's a foot taller up. than Vladimir Putin. Come on, huge. man. He's a huge. Man. And by the way, Putin is a huge fan of America shit. Like he will say he's not, but like all these fucking for all these European leaders, especially, love one sport or another. It's some sport in America, and it's usually basketball. For Basketball's some big in Russia. Well, I guarantee Russia. you, he he loves he plays hockey. Yeah, with the Russian team, yeah. so he's probably fucking glued to the NHL. Oh he's yeah, the greatest hockey yeah. player of all time. <laughs> he, he, is. he actually does literally Kim Jong Il it. He scored. He scored eight goals in yeah. a in an All Star game or yeah. something like that. Yeah, against like Ovechkin like, and shit. I, yeah, oh, he made Ovechkin look like a dummy out there. Uh, yeah, Ovechkin might be the the goals leader after this season. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All time? he's getting close. All yeah. time, yeah, he's all getting time? really close. Hell of a player, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then you think about how he got just smashed by Putin. That's how good Putin is. I know. Now think about that. So if Putin played in the NHL, mm. he would have beat Gretzky. Oh yeah, yeah. He what's was that, close. What's that? What's that movie? Dictator with uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking Franco, about? Yeah, yeah, when he wins the Olympics, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking love that movie. Same. How how old is Especially Rodman? Especially when they're 60? when they're singing that Katy Perry song at the end. It's so fucking funny. That's oh, one of the best a, things it's of a, all time. It's a great movie. Robin is 61. Holy shit. He can still fucking ball, man. 18 boards. He's still yeah. good for 18 boards for sure. As long as he gets like three days off after every game to go to Vegas. Exactly. And also, Griner's got two inches on him. Oh, Whoa. Probably quite. Well, really? I mean, Where I mean, at? I think oh, you're talking about height. Oh, okay, height. I thought Robin's you were... for sure shrank, right? Yeah. 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 He's yeah. an old he's man. Listed at 6'7". He's probably 6'5 now, yeah. Yeah, 6'5". Yeah. Right. He's yeah, probably shrunk yeah, down yeah. a little bit. Uh, Flo, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on the Instagram, Florent.Groberg, and you know, same thing with Twitter and same thing with Facebook. Hell Fucking yeah. Creative.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really creative. Consistency is really important in marketing. It, it sure is. Yeah, it sure still, is. still doesn't help uh, the fact that I have like 150 figure counts. Oh, yeah? Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, what, a, a, couple of them, money and a couple of them are me, actually. Is yep. it you? No. I, I just, oh, like, of you? No, no, it's me pretending to be you. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Is it working? No. Yeah, no, I don't know. It me sucks. Man. <laughs> 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 well, thanks for being here today. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the weather will, will be able to get you home safely here. It's all good. We'll find out. Yeah. It's always I, a it's, mystery. It's, it's, a, it's so good, I'll tell you that. Dallas is the problem. It's not here. Well, Dallas is good right now. They're good now. Yeah, they're good you'll, now. You'll it's be been, fine. Yeah, they're good now. But, hey, you know, it's always a pleasure coming on the yeah, show. Man. It's fucking, it's always a trip. You guys are ridiculous. I love it. Well, you're welcome. You're but, welcome. Um, At the top of the show, we got sick, and I'm, I apologize. Well, <laughs> I feel like we straightened out the plane towards the end. You know? Was it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. No, we went back to uh, Pocket Pussies real oh, quick. Oh, we did? Yeah, or okay, whatever. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Wait, what were we talking uh, about? Go to adamandeve.com, promo code Drinking Bros gets you 20% off there. That's a real sponsor. So if, yeah. if you want that pocket pussy, you can get it for 20% off. 50% off, actually. I'm sorry. Plus and free, free shipping. shipping yeah. yeah, but you only get one. They only give you <laughs> one, one item, pocket yeah. pussy. Dead serious. So get a, get a fucking Sibian or something. Get your favorite, sure. get yeah. your favorite pocket pussy. Yeah. Take your time on there. All or right. get something where you can buy multiple attachments for it, right? <laughs> that way you can maximize. So hold on. Before we close out, are we getting that dog? Oh, the robot dog? Yeah, if, the we, robot if we can legally purchase one, we'll f- find a way to get it. Yeah. I want the one from Russia with the machine gun. Although, I mean, who's going to – are we going to be able to do this before Jared Taylor does? Come on, man. He's probably, probably got a plan right now to get that thing. I, it might be at his house right it now. It could be. He's buying – you know that thing at, uh, at the parks that spins around really fast and you stick to the side? Yeah. I yeah. can't remember what they're called, but he's buying – he's in the process of buying one for, his, for some fucking reason right now. Uh, what is it called? Is it a merry-go-round? It's not a merry-go-round, no. right? It's, uh, I know what you're talking about. You it hop creates on. artificial gravity basically by spinning really yeah, fast dude, and you stick to the side fast. of it. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, for, oh, I, he wants, to, he's trying to get the fucking actual gravity machine. Yeah. So what, he, well, what he wants to do, not, not the one. Yeah. But from the, NASA from the uses. fairs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he's, uh, here's his plan. He wants to do a cooking show. Okay. Jared with, does? Yeah. With him and Caleb where they're cooking in the middle of it and they're trying to serve the food to the people that are spinning around. Oh, that's really funny. You'll know, you'll, know, you'll never do it, but it's great. He may not do the show, but I, I'm I'm <laughs> confident that he's going to get this piece of machinery because yeah. he's a fucking lunatic. He'll get it. He'll get it for sure. They sell those fucking yeah. things. Uh, thanks for joining us today, kids. Go to iTunes, rate the show five star, and leave a quick review. That's all the advertisers care about. And go to Spotify. That's just a five star, and you can walk away. No reviews there. I don't have text capabilities or anything like that, which is awesome. I love that shit. For D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone.